Hey, what is up, mortals? It is TC Crew here with a new video for you. Welcome to part one of What If Deku Had Divine Dividing. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So we begin. A long, long time ago, there was a great war, unlike anything seen before with human eyes. For this was not a war raged between the nations of man, but rather the divine as a three-way conflict between God and his angels. The devils and the fallen angels range across the heaven as well as the earth, all to see who would, in the end, take control over the world. Then one day, from out of the blue, the war was interrupted by two great dragons. No one knew why they were fighting. All they knew was that the two great beasts cared not where they took their brawl. They fought wherever they pleased, including on the battlefield of the Great War. And when the three great powers tried to get them to stop or take their own battles somewhere else, the two dragons became enraged for it it is not wise to get in the middle of a fight between dragons. Eventually, the three leaders of the great factions called a pause to the war in order to deal with the two dragons. The three stood there, united in a single cause, as the dragons bared their fangs and claws at them. The two great beasts attacked, aiming to eat the heads of the leaders of heaven and hell, the fallen angels. Yet, despite their power rivaling that of gods, the two dragons were defeated, their bodies cut into pieces, and their souls sealed into humans as what would later be called sacred gears. These sacred gears, or God's artifacts, allowed the humans who received them to enact miracles on Earth. Since that day so long ago, many different humans have held within the powers of these sacred gears, each one of them making their mark in the pages of history, becoming legends. Yet no matter how long time flowed, the desire to battle between these dragons never ceased. It seemed that, without fail, the hosts of the sacred gears would seek the other out to fight. Though that conflict never changed, the world around them did. The human race, which had only ever received supernatural powers from various sacred gears sprinkled into the masses, would eventually gain powers of their own, without the, the need of the divine. This change began with the arrival of the glowing baby in China. From their powers known as quirks, began to spread all over the world with 80% of the population, having at least some sort of power. From there, the world changed into something straight out of comic books as the impossible was made a reality. However, the same would not be said for the one Izuku Midoriya. Where do you think you're going, Deku? The voices of Katsuki Bakugo rang throughout the classroom followed soon, the sound of a loud explosion before dark smoke filled half the room. A cry of pain rang through the air as the class heard someone rolling on the ground, their bag and books getting scattered all around before the boy hit the back wall of the classroom. As the smoke cleared, most of the students looked on with mild interest as Bakugo, the one who caused the explosion, rammed his target by his uniform jacket and pulled him up to his feet. Some even began smirking, leaning back in their seats as Bakugo towered over the trembling form of a green-haired boy with diamond-shaped freckles. No one said anything as frightened tears began forming in Izuku's eyes, letting out a yelp as Bakugo's right hand slammed into the boy's shoulder gripping it tightly as the sound of several small pops could be heard as well as the sight of smoke rising up between the boy's fingers. But nobody in the classroom rushed to his defense, nor did they even bother to find a teacher to put an end to this. After all, why should they? Izuku Midoriya was quirkless, a person born without any sort of superhuman ability. What was strange was that he should have gotten one of his parents' quirks, or a combination of both. Yet he had nothing. Thus, as a nickname which Bakugo gave him all those years ago stated, he was useless, a Deku. But despite this fact, Izuku had a dream, one which all the students in Aldera Middle School had mocked Midoriya forever since the day he had been declared quirkless. 
And it was this dream that enraged Bakugo. You were there, weren't you? At the UA mock exam for the hero course. Don't dare to lie to me, you damn worthless nerd. I heard some of those extras talking about you while I was in the bathroom. Talking about some mumbling freak taking notes on everyone he saw. You really think you can compete against me? No, no Kachan. I'm not trying to compete against anyone. Honest. As Bakugo glared at the teen with explosive fury, <laughs> a few members of the class laughed out loud. It was just so absurd that no matter what people told him, Midoriya refused to learn the simple truth that he could never, ever become a hero. He had no quirk, no strength of his own. Sure, some schools like UA had eased up on their acceptance policies into hero courses and allowed those with no quirks to enter, but nobody actually believed that there was a quirkless person out there that could succeed in getting in. It was all for the publicity. But no matter how many times these several facts were told to him, Izuka Midoriya refused to back down from his dream of becoming a hero. If only he would just give up, then maybe he wouldn't be bullied so much. And there was nobody who bullied Izuku more than his former childhood friend, Katsuki Bakugo. Bakugo who had been blessed with an amazing, powerful, and flashy quirk, practically making it his destiny to become a great hero. Something that he liked to remind his classmates whenever the opportunity arose, much to their jaw grin. To have someone like Izuku even consider climbing to the same heights as Bakugo enraged the team like nothing else. You really think you, a quirkless loser, can get into your way? I'm sick and tired of you looking down on me, Deku. I'm going to remind you of your place once and for all. Maybe this will get it through your damned head. As Bakugo pulled back his left arm, a larger explosion than the normal pops he would make when bullying Midoriya erupted, causing the class to become deathly silent. Tension now filled the air as many of those watching now wished they were somewhere, anywhere else. As they could tell, this wasn't like what Bakugo had done in the past. Normally, Bakugo would verbally assault the green-haired teen and use his explosions to either knock Izuka around against the wall or as intimidation. The blonde bomber wasn't stupid, always in control of the force of his explosions to make sure he didn't leave any lasting damage or cause enough harm that would get him barred from entering any hero school. But now, that explosion he just used would surely be enough to leave Midoriya with burn marks on his face, possibly even scars. Was the mere fact that Izuku was not just talking about entering UA, but actually making a physical effort to get in and raging Bakugo this much? Or was this a case of the straw that broke the camel's back? Either way, Midoriya was going to be in a world of hurt, and the quirkless boy knew it as well, still feeling the heat on his face from that last blast. No, 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 it's really lost it this time. Kachin's really going to kill me, and no one's going to save me. I have to do something. Izuku's body trembled out of control, more tears roaming on his eyes as the inevitable seemed to slow down before him. He could make out every bead of nitro sweat on his bully's open palm as it seemed to gather to create another large blast. He could see the motion of Bakugo pulling his arm back, getting ready to slam his hand in Izuku's face. If only he had some sort of quirk that could help him, a strength enhancement to help him break free of the grasp, a reflection quirk to redirect the blast. A rapping quirk so that he could be anywhere else. Heck, he'd even settle for a slime quirk so that he could just melt out of Bakugo's grip and escape through a crack in the wall or under the door. Only he had none of those. As Bakugo's hand began moving closer to him, something awoke in Izuku. Perhaps it was just his fight or flight instinct, the voice of his desire to take flight, finally going hoarse and allowing the fight to be heard. Perhaps it was just his desire to not be a victim of this anymore, having finally reached his limits? Or it could just be the knowledge that no matter what he did, he was going to get hurt, so he might as well try and fight back. So Izuku reached out with his dominant left hand to grab Katsuki's wrist, an act that at first startled the blonde. Then, like clockwork, he became angrier, but Izuku did not back down. As a strange feeling began moving through his body and into his hand. This feeling... His power began to shift and 
changed rapidly around his hand, making him feel like his hand was changing into something clawed, only it wasn't. It was still the same hand that Izuku used to take all his hero notes, just a bit brighter. Then Izuku heard a voice in the back of his mind, a boomingly powerful and somehow ancient voice that seemed to echo all around him. About time you did that. I was beginning to wonder if you would ever stand up for yourself. Now, let us take his power for our own. Divide! Izuku shot along with a bright blue light coming from Izuku's left hand caught the blonde bomber off guard. His wrist twisting so that his palm faced his victim while letting out an explosive blast. However, compared to the previous explosions, this one wasn't all that bad. It had force behind it, but only enough to compare to a powerful wind that would make walking a tad more strenuous. As for the heat, it wasn't the searing heat Izuku had known for so many years, but rather simple warmth. What's more, Izuku felt a surge of power running through him like nothing he had ever felt before. The sugar rush he had felt when he was a little kid and eaten 12 All Might and Limited Edition chocolate bars had nothing on this. Why are you just standing there? Quick, use the energy boost to take this whelp down before he recovers. Izuku blinked as the voice rang through his head once more. Noticing at the same time a shocked Bakugo trying to escape from the young Midori's grasp. Yes, trying. Bakugo, the strongest person in their class, was struggling to free himself from Izuku's grip. Instinct took over again, Izuku flinging Bakugo's arm to the side like it was the easiest thing in the world before bringing his arm back to elbow the mighty Bakugo right in the face. Izuku watched as the ashen blonde spun in the air slightly before crashing to the ground where he then rolled into a nearby desk. For a moment, Izuku stood there as he breathed hard until he realized what he had just done. He had just knocked Bakugo down like it was nothing. And what was scary about it all was just how easy it all had been. Like something had sapped away most of the bully's strength. And how did he move that fast? Slowly looking up, Izuku began to sweat as he realized the entire class was watching him with wide-eyed expressions. Just then, someone gave his flight instinct a glass of water for it screamed at him to run, to put as much distance between him and everyone else as possible. Because when Bakugo got up, well, Izuku didn't need to finish that thought, as he grabbed all his stuff from the floor before hightailing it out of there at full speed. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN allows you to change your IP address making it harder to track and securing your privacy. In addition to providing safe passage through the web, you can also expand the reach of your favorite streaming services like Disney+. If you are from the United States, you won't be able to watch any of the MCU and Sony Spider-Man movies, but by switching your location to Japan, you can access them whenever you want. Check out the link in the description to get 3 extra months when you purchase the 12-month subscription plan that costs $99.99 a year. This deal is for a limited time, and thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. What just happened? What just happened? What just happened? This single sentence was on an infinite loop, the green-haired teen asking this over and over again as he ran at full speed back to his home. Once inside the apartment, he had locked the door before heading to his own room where he leaned his back against the door. His legs felt weak, his uniform now drenched in sweat from that epic run with no breaks, his hands jittering as he allowed his backpack to drop to the floor. Then slowly, Izuku sank to the floor with his back never leaving the door. The boy could feel his body crashing, the burst of energy he had gained with his fight with Bakugo having vanished shortly after he left the classroom. He had called on every reserve of energy he had in his being, and then some just to keep running to put as much distance between him and his bully. And now, when his body finally crashing, all the teen was left with were his thoughts. So, as he sat there, his mind tried his best to piece together what had happened. Had someone used their quirk to save him? He was quirkless after all, so that made sense. Perhaps a teacher or another student. That thought was quickly struck down, though. Logically, if there was a teacher nearby, they would have stepped in to put a stop to it themselves rather than using their quirk and getting in trouble. Also, Izuku knew the quirks of all the teachers at his middle school, 
Heck, he even knew the quirk from that substitute teacher who had come from that nearby town of Kuho. And none of the other students he was aware of had quirks that could give someone else power like that. Did that mean, did he dare hope? Heart pounding, Azuku crawled on the floor to get to his desk. As much as his body protested, demanding that he lay there for a few hours or days, Azuku forced himself up and onto his chair before pulling out a notebook on whose title on the cover was written in crayons, Hero Analysis of Izuku Midoriya. His hands trembled now with excitement as he opened the first page, seeing that it was mostly empty save for a single word that he had written so long ago. Quirkless. Around that word were several stains created from the tears that he had been pouring down from his eyes. New watermarks threatened to join them, but Izuku managed to hold them back. Finding a spot below that word, Izuku brought the tip of his pen to the line. Then he took a deep breath to calm his nerves before beginning to write. Izuku wrote down his theories on what he believed his quirk might be. Someone else was looking through the teen's eyes, or rather something. This being deep within Izuku watched on in silence. As Izuku's pen flew over the page, noting the meticulous way the boy was breaking down how his quirk worked, he may not have had the same level of brilliance as his former host, but the boy was no slouch. With time, he would become a worthy vessel. However, when the teen wrote down that his quirk might be causing him to hallucinate voices, the being within Izuku could no longer keep quiet. I can assure you, I am no mere hallucination. The suddenness as well as the power behind those words caused Izuku to jump in the chair, his pen being flung into the air. Briefly, the teen looked around, trying to see if there was anyone around, only to then realize that he had heard that voice before, in school, and in his head. Okay, okay, I'm still hearing voices. I hope that this is because of my quirk, like some sort of side effect. I am neither a side effect, nor am I a quirk. Oh, okay, then what are you? My name is Albion, the White Dragon Emperor also known as the Vanishing Dragon. Long ago, I was defeated by the leaders of the three great powers before having my soul and power steal away into what would be later known as Sacred Gears. Think of them as superpowers before the age of what you call quirks. As Zuku sat there listening to the voice now known as Albion, taking in what it was saying before coming to the most logical conclusion. So I guess I must have a sentient quirk then. It would have to have some ability to think in order to make up such a story. I have heard about the existence of such quirks, but I never thought that I would actually have one. Elbion, in response, just let out a sigh. I should have realized that words alone might not be enough to convince you. Perhaps a demonstration of my power is in order. Before Izuku could say or do anything, the same strange feeling he had before he activated his quirk began moving through his body and into his left hand. With wide-eyed fascination, Izuku watched as his left hand began to glow blue, hoping to see his quirk in action again so that he could have more notes. He had expected a great many things to happen like the power in the room dwindling, or the batteries in his devices having their energy lives cut in half and then feeling a great charge of power. What he didn't expect was his left hand becoming a white, clawed gauntlet with a blue gem on the back of his hand. Now witness me in my original form. Izuku sat there shocked as the voice he had been hearing in his head was now coming from the blue gem. But before he could dwell on that, the room around him vanished, only to be replaced by scattered white clouds within a seemingly endless blue sky. Then rising from below was a dragon, a large western-style dragon, with white scales so beautiful that they seemed to glow along with blue eyes, two golden horns on top of his head, and feathered wings that reminded him of an Aztec god he had once read about. And as Izuku sat there, Staring into the blue eyes that stared right back into his own, he could feel the power of this great beast that dwarfed him in every way possible. A power that was real. This thing, this dragon was real. There was no way his quirk could do what it did back at school and show him all this. Good, you're catching on. With that, Izuku found himself back in his room, having never left his seat, with the blue gem now embedded in his left hand. So, it's true. I don't have a quirk. Everything that happened back in the classroom was because of you. 
As Azuku stared at the gem, he could feel his heart pinching in the most painful ways while tears began to form in his eyes. It was like the world's cruelest joke to have him think that, after all these years, he finally had a quirk. That he could finally be a hero, only to find out it was a lie. He didn't blame Albion, since he probably didn't intend to get Izuku's hopes up, just wanting to protect his host or something like that. You are wrong, human. That got Izuku's attention. When your soul was created, the Shaky Gear Divine Dividing was fused into it, becoming one with you. This power became your power when you stood up for yourself and tried to fight back. Your subconscious called upon it. All I did was offer some brief guidance. Then, then why couldn't you use this power before? I mean, Kachan used to beat me up all the time when we were kids. Again, Albion sighed. The main reason was that your body was too weak to handle the transfer of power. Most of the assumptions you made in your notes are correct. Divine dividing is a power that transfers half of the strength and powers of your opponent before adding what was stolen to your own abilities. With this power, you will always be at your peak while your enemy gets weaker faster. However, when you were younger, your body could not handle the strain of taking in the stored power. As such, you were unable to use divine dividing. Azuku's eyes widened at that. And now I'm strong enough? <laughs> Just barely. And I am being generous here. In truth, what you saw on your hand was just the first stage of divide dividing. A half-awake form, if you will. In order to gain access to my power, your body is going to need to become stronger. For a moment, Izuku felt himself deflate, as Albion's statement of him being weak. Not that it wasn't true, he was built like a strong man after all. It was, well, he had hoped that this quirk would be able to change that, making him stronger so that he could become a hero. Yet, a moment later, Izuku's eyes brightened as he realized what Albion was saying. If this was just what the bare minimum of divine dividing could do, just imagine what it would be capable of once he grew stronger, the full access to everything that Izuku felt when he saw Albion in his true form. Just imagine how many people he could save with that sort of strength. Quickly turning back to his notebook, he began writing ideas at a frantic pace. Alright, so first off, I'm going to need to register divine dividing as my quirk. That will give me time to figure out what sort of training I should be doing to boost my overall physical capabilities. Let's see, I could try getting a bunch of weights and uh, using them. Maybe even jogging with weights, or that helps with some people. Or I could look online for a workout program. Wait, maybe it's joining a dojo or a gym. That might actually kill two birds with one stone. What are you thinking, partner? Grinning, Izuku pulled out his phone and began typing in his search while barely noting the fact that he was being called partner. Well... The way I see it, I not only need to be able to handle this strength, but also how to use it to its full advantage, meaning that I'm going to need to learn how to fight. A dojo would not only help me improve my strength and stamina, but also teaching me how to fight. I might not be able to go blow to blow with someone who has been studying for years, but at least get the basics down before taking the UN entrance exam. The same goes for a gym. They'll be able to provide a number of different workout classes as well as some self-defense classes or kickboxing. As Izuku began looking up at the nearby gym to see what sort of classes they offered and how much, Albion grinned. His newest host was certainly interesting. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, I'd like to thank our Patreons. PD Flames, Ethan Davis, Harry Chills, Shifter Mealies, Adam Zagel, Zill, Beat 3 and Joshua Phillips. Secondly, I'd also like to thank all of our YouTube members. Toya Costa, Rob the King, Sifflord906, CF2364 and Knuckles, Rimuru Tempest, Angel Jurez, Donald C. Stewart, Brian Greer, and Demonized Fox. Thirdly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has you covered. All We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake, anime with a twist. Check out if you're interested. 
Fourthly, on behalf of We The Celestials, fourthly, on behalf of We The Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's excellent content production. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We The Celestials, I'd like to extend an invitation to join the team. The only caveat is that we only accept members from 16 years old to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interest by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it for today's video. So thank you all for watching and have a great day.